So today I'm going to talk about sourcing replacement parts for the Malian M150 printer. Uh, this printer came originally from Hobby King but they don't seem to stock very much in the way of, of spare parts. Um, the original heater block assembly you can see here comprises the heater block itself with the, with the nozzle and the heating element that uh, heats it up obviously and a thermistor which is um, in the in the block to obviously sense the, the the temperature. Now, if any of those items fail, um, you're uh, you're going to be out of out of business. So, uh, all of these parts are available through through Banggood. Um, you can buy a heater block assembly. This is just the the part at the at the bottom that you can see here, including the the nozzle. The the piece at the top here, I had to make myself because I couldn't find a, a, a source for them. So that's that's one part that costs um, I think three euros twenty something like that. Um, the other parts that you can source are the heating element itself. Now uh, this comes with a ridiculously long cable uh, silicon wire uh, on it, uh, which you cut to length, and I've actually used a, an off cut from that to to sheath the uh, the other part which you you need. Um, which is the thermistor that senses the temperature. Now the, the thermistor is this tiny little guy here, uh, just the, the size, a little bit more than a, than, a, than a pinhead perhaps, and that's obviously incredibly delicate, it's, it's, it's glass, and you can see that the, uh, the, the wires are, are, are not much bigger than, than, uh, than a hair, hair's width. So what I've done there, as I say, is to is to sheath the outside with some of the silicon that I cut off of the uh, the heating element and uh, the actual copper copper wire here when you've cut that down just give that a gentle scrape with um, uh, a scalpel blade or a sharp blade and until you can see it shiny and then it's uh, easy to, to solder to. So those are the uh, the elements uh, I should just mention that the cost of the heating element itself I think is about three euros and ten of these uh, little thermistors uh, are just uh, a two euros fifty so uh, very uh, very competitive prices there to so say these uh, I haven't seen available from Hobby King and from some other suppliers have been uh, uh, been silly money so how would we know if a, uh, a thermistor uh, or a the heating element is, is faulty and how do we know that these are equivalent to the ones that are installed? Well the easiest way is to, is to measure it. So for example this is the connector from the thermistor uh, supplied and if we on resistance probe that we get 152 kilo ohms. Now if we compare that against the the one from Banggood, 149. So um, this obviously is in free air and not in the in in, in the block itself, which can make some more difference. Uh, but um, they're not uh, they're not million miles apart. So we know that uh, the thermistors they they tally up. Um, the next thing to look at is the actual heating element for the block itself. Now. The connectors as, as supplied, uh, many people have no doubt noticed they get hot and they, they in fact uh, burn out. So I've replaced those with 2mm gold connectors. And again on the heater block itself, uh, if we take a measurement of the... connection there. We can see it's around 4.5 ohms, and for the equivalent one from from Banggood, about the same 4 ohms. So uh, we're in the right ballpark. So if you're if you're troubleshooting um, the thermistor, you know is going to be in the order of 140 uh, K at uh, normal room temperature. Um, I would suspect that these uh, are most likely to go open circuit and uh, you can obviously test uh, by me 
changing the, the temperature that's, that's going up and, up and down with that. The heater element similarly is most likely to go open circuit, burn out. So if it's not around the 4 ohms then you know that that's, uh, that's uh, something to chase down. So now that we've verified that the parts, uh, at least in theory, are going to work, let's get them assembled into the block and, uh, and test it. So now we're going to disassemble uh, the, uh, the assembly here with the, the filament, uh, filament drive and the, the, the hot end support and the fan and all that, all that goodness. Now there may be folks out there that uh, shy away from tearing the stuff down in the, in the thought that they may be able, not be able to get it back together or it has some arcane uh, science behind it, some pixie dust or, uh, or something like that. But um, in reality it's quite mundane. So all we have to do, um, we've obviously obviously dis disconnected the, uh, the wires there. There are just two long M3 set screws um, that hold the assembly together. So once we get those out of the way, we can remove the, the fan and the heat sink that uh, is behind that. And you can now see the the filament drive. Uh, this is the, the lever you push down to get the filament through and then the, the filament simply passes through this, this gear arrangement that, that pulls it and then uh, when you're poking away in the in the dark trying to find the uh, the entrance to the the, uh, the filament tube you can see the filament tube there on on top of the uh, of the aluminium block and this uh, this assembly simply sits on the on the top of it like that so we can see uh, immediately that uh, the the height that, that it needs to be to uh, to feed through there properly so we can remove this uh, cable from the from the filament drive for the moment uh, the fan and the heatsink assembly we can move out of the way also and pretty much all that we're left with uh, is the uh, the heater block itself. Now that's held in underneath again by two small M3 screws. Uh, there's one on each side there that we need to remove. So having removed those, we can see that the whole the whole assembly just just comes right out. Uh, there's nothing, as I say, uh, very magical about it at all. Uh, have a, having assembled the components uh, for the replacement here, uh, the only thing to note is that the actual heater block on the replacement one sits lower than the original. So um, when we set the bed height um, having replaced it we'll have to set the bed as low as possible before we do the auto home otherwise it's going to bash into the into the surface there so the new guy just sits in place there I've already set the height here of the of the filament guide so uh, that's been done then it is a simple matter of replacing the two M3 screws, cap screws, in the base. Okay, with that in place now, um, just you can see again when that sits on top of there. Um, that's the, the filament guide that takes it down into the into the heater block. So the next thing to do is to replace the, the fan. So these two long screws here just sit in, mate up with the holes on the stepper motor. So now everything is in, in place. We have the new heater block and we've 
wired that up and we put the thermistor connections in and reconnected the the drive for the the filament drive um, I'm just going to uh, lower the bed and uh, do the do the zeroing before we do the final test so here I'm just uh, feeding the filament through into the hot end that I've uh, preset the temperature on and uh, in it goes so just check that that's extruding yep that's working fine so now just push an extra little bit through make sure and now we're printing the test cube which is included on the SD card from the from the printer and just finishing the print there now the finished print uh, just straight off the bed there you can see that it's, uh, it's uh, reasonable quality and just do a quick check on the on the on the sizes there uh, so the height 10.03 should be 10 mil but it's got an extra layer on it and uh, 20 mil 19.9 on the uh, El Cheapo cal uh, calipers so in conclusion we can see that the the parts from Banggood the, the heater block assembly the heating element and the thermistor are all good replacement parts for the Milan M150.